know, it ain't even no need to talk about your ministry if you ain't travailed. Well. It's no need to talk about your calling if you haven't travailed. Well. Because travail is the means by which there is an opening created for you to do what God yes. called you to do. Yes. So if you have not yet travailed or labored or pained through delivery, yes. there is nothing that's coming forth that came from God. That's right. That is why there's a lot of man-made stuff going on in the kingdom.
want to say to us on tonight, the first point, if there's points, is leave the weak and beggarly elements. The Bible says, how is it that you've turned again to the weak and beggarly elements? Do you desire again to be in bondage? So the instruction tonight is leave the weak and the beggarly elements. Everything that makes you self-sufficient. God wants to destroy that stuff because the Judaizers and the zealous Jewish Christians, they began to be so into the law and into the customs that they had a pompous attitude and many of them were converted Pharisees. So they had an idea that I've observed all of the commands. I believe if you really look at the scripture and you study when the, the, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and Jesus said you got to leave everything and follow me, he said I've observed all of that stuff since my youth. He thought he had it going on. He, did. he said I've observed all of that. See that's the thing about law. The thing about law is that if you think you got it down then you, you think you're all good. That's the problem with religion and church and religious movement because it looks like everything is in order but the hearts are messed up. So God is not really receiving what's coming forth because it's tainted and it's not pure. But I believe that young man, I really believe that when he walked up on Jesus, he knew he had it going on there. He was going to be able to follow him. But Jesus asked him, he challenged him with the weak and beggarly elements. See, he challenged him with his money. He said, take all of that that you have and sell it and give it to the poor. And then you can turn on and follow me. It says that the boy walked away sad. Right. Why? Because he wasn't willing to let go of the weak and beggarly elements. Wow. He was so concerned about the sufficiency in the things that he had. Oh and even the observations of the laws. See, God is telling us we got to leave the weak and the beggarly elements. When Paul and Barnabas was out there, what happened? Because the people are so used to worshiping gods and things. The Bible says that they did many miracles when they were there. The Bible says that they did so many miracles that the people began to bring them things because they said the gods have come from heaven and put themselves in a human form. If you read out Acts 14. Yes, and what happens is Paul rent his clothes and said this is not so. We came so that you don't serve man. You don't serve God. But you turn away from those idol gods and you worship the true and living God. And the Bible teaches us that the church grew. So the church began to grow so there, and there were some issues. But the Bible says that Paul looked and he said, so now I have to travail and birth again till Christ be formed in you. In other words, Paul had a made up mind that whatever he had to do again, he was going to do it because his mission was that Christ be formed in them. Amen. Jesus. Yeah. Keisha, can you read Hebrews 5? Because I want, I want to talk about this, this thing about the beggarly elements again. Hebrews 5, 12 through 15, if you will. Verse 12 says, For, the, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, right. mm. you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Hold on. She said, the time has come. Now we talked about the fullness of time last night. Time that we ought to be teachers. We have need that one teach us again. <laughs> the first principles now this may not be for everybody some of y'all are new you babies in the kingdom and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing growing Amen. but there's some of you that's been serving God for 10, 15 and 20 years and the Bible says at the time now that you should be in the birthing place teaching you have a need can I bring it home for a minute you that Pastor Dunn and her shall stand up and teach you again the first very principles mm. Mm. from the oracles of God <laughs> he says and you have become such that you need milk and not meat why is that we got to deal with why, why? because why? we haven't left the weak and beggarly elements we haven't been willing to do what it is necessary to grow up because last night we talked about it we talked about that we had to grow up we talked about the idea that we have to go from babies and children to sons. Yeah. And if we're not able to go to sons, then we're going to stay in that place where somebody has to keep teaching us the foundational principles over, over and over and over. It should get to a place in the kingdom of God where no man or woman yeah. of God yeah. should have to stand up and talk about tithing except for in a new convert class. Right. Come on. Because believers in the church Amen. know these things. Jesus. So when people come in and they're The 
the principles, the first principles of the oracles of God. And, and, and what, I, what I love about it, like last night, the word become. See, we can't take no word for granted when we read the scriptures. Just like last night we said that we are all children of God. But he has given us the power to become sons of God. In other words, he ain't going to come and just say, now you a son. He gave you the power to become a son. In other words, he gave you the power to grow up. And it says here that we have become, become. such right. as we have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Wow. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Mm -hmm. That is, those who by reason of use Amen. have their senses exercised mm -hmm. to discern both good and evil. Come on. Okay. We weren't designed to live off of milk. A baby wasn't designed to live off milk forever. Milk is good for the bones and it does do a body good, but every now and then you need some meat and vegetables. See it. Even vegetarians that, that abstain from eating meat have to get special vitamins and minerals and things that they have to take nutrients so that their body can get what it needs. We weren't designed to have to live off of milk. And what I love about, about this, and this is what the Lord gave me today, he says that strong meat belongs to the ones who are of full age. Uh -huh. Though that means mature. We talked about it last night. We have to become mature. But then there's a catchphrase in there. Because how many of you know if you've been in church long enough, you just think you're mature? Yeah, say that. <laughs> you know where we're going, when we're going. You start quoting the scripture yeah. before the pastor can get it out. I'm mature. I know where we're going with this. Say that. Always say aggravates that. me to know when, I, when people think, I, yeah, I know where she's going. You just sit there and wait. <laughs> Y'all know I like to. But seriously, Jesus. you can stay in church long enough and you can do customs and traditions long enough just like they did. And you can think that you're mature. So now you're trying to teach other people. You're not. Mm. But what I love about it, there's an or in there. Yeah. See, it says, or by use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm. It covers everybody. Maybe you don't know Genesis the Revelation yet. Maybe you don't observe all the traditions and maybe you don't conform to all of that. But the question I have for you tonight, are you willing to use the muscle that God gave you? Are you willing to use your senses so that God can then mature you so you can discern between good and evil? But I have to be willing to sit there and grow and by use have my senses exercised. That means you got to be disciplined. That means you got to train yourself. That means you got to read and pray and study. Right. It's even more than what the church requires. That's right. That's right. Because then I can discern good and evil. In other words, I know where to go and when to go. I know when not to go. Amen. The Bible says, and I believe it's Nehemiah who was building the wall, and Tobias and Sandal came up on them and tried to dress it up and make it look like it was the perfect setup. I need you to come to the sanctuary because there's a man of God there. And the Bible says. See, that's the 
right we spend more time trying to get a message together than we do trying to get our life together. Because the reality is if you get your life together and serve somebody, if you become mature, if you grow up, if you let God use you, then you ain't got to worry about putting no message together because out of your belly will flow rivers of life, will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Jesus. Paul says this in the Bible in Philippians 3 and 15 he said let us be mature he said therefore therefore as many of us are mature if we say we're mature let us be thus minded in other words okay let us think so and if we are in any way in otherwise any otherwise minded God will reveal this to us I believe that because the Holy Spirit in us he's always revealing everything we need the question is, do we turn the radio up loud in the car and sing over him, or do we listen? The question is, do we start shouting over his voice when we should be sitting in the chair being quiet? Come on, say that, say that, say that. The question is, are you waiting for a revival where people just lay hands and you fall out in the floor and receive something, but then you get up tomorrow and acting like hell on wheels, don't even know what happened? Come on, come on. That's why I said last night, destroy everything you know about revival or what you think it looks like anyway. We ain't gonna destroy the truth of what it is, but destroy the tradition of what you think it looks Amen. like. Where everybody just run around and get happy and run around and bump into each other. I'm not knocking it, y'all. This is the time to grow up. Yeah. yeah. And it's the time to sit down and receive yeah. the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's Thank it. You. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Mm. He said in Philippians 3, whatever we've attained, let us walk in it. That's right. Some of y'all sitting up here loaded with the word of God. Like, and you sit there and you're not doing anything with it. My God. Wow. Because of fear. Your pastor is not put in place to make you fearful or intimidated. Your pastor is put in place to lead you. We have an issue sometimes because the truth be told, either one, we want to perform and shine. So we don't want them to see any faults in us. We don't want them to really correct us. We want to show them that we're like them. But you're not. That's right, say that. I mean, it's okay, you're not. That's why they're a pastor. Yeah. That's why they're a leader. That's why they're a shepherd. It doesn't mean they're perfect, but it means they've been called to lead you. Yes. But sometimes we get intimidated and fearful because of the performance and the competition. Uh oh, because oh, there are people who compete with their pastor. Jesus. Can I talk? Talk, please. It's people that will literally call the pastor. I know. Well, what the Lord was saying. Why you were doing that? My God, mm. yeah. My God help. Jeez. We have to understand that God has put our pastors here to help shape us yes. and lead us. Yes. And we allow ourselves to be intimidated and fearful because we don't like to be corrected. Mm. We don't like to be embarrassed. Mm. Why? Because we haven't grown up yet. My God. Because we don't really understand how this thing works because if we study the word of God and we look at Joshua and Moses, and we look at Elijah and Elisha, and we begin to look at these partnerships, you will see that they had to be taught. Yes, sir. And it's okay to be taught. It's yes, good to be taught. It's good to be rebuked. It's good to be correct, because guess what? In the long run, it's just humbling you and it's That's shaping right. you. That's right, say that. And then if God has to so that they release you or you move on, you can go and you can be released with the idea that this person knows they went through. Mm -hmm. Yes. They learned. Jesus. They were teachable. Jesus. They can speak well of you. I don't even know how I shifted in that direction. Jesus. But somebody Spirit. needs to know that tonight. Yes. G. Right. Well, we have the idea that Paul is upset a little bit. He's, 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 he's grieved, rather. That's not the word. Not upset. He's grieved. Because he's saying, this is not what I expected. And now I have right. to travail. Right. And I, I, I got you got to be delivered again. You've returned to the weak and beggarly elements. And you've got to be delivered again. That's why I told you all last night, that television and that phone and that Facebook and that internet, don't get me wrong, but it all has its place and its purpose. Yeah, yeah. Right. We right. can't even drive. We can't even hear God because we're not only driving, but we're driving, texting, listening to the CD, and then some of y'all cars watching the DVD. Uh -oh. It's too much going on, and every now and then. Because if I don't be quiet and get somewhere, my flesh will be on parade like yesterday. That's right. So we have to be careful. Because the Bible says in Hebrews, and I, I, I jotted this down because it's true. In Hebrews, the sixth chapter, in the fifth verse, it says that after we've tasted,
it the good word of God and powers of the age to come. In other words, he's endued us with power that we again, and we, we repent again and we crucify again the son of God. In other words, it says we put him on display and humiliate him again in an open shame. Jesus. Because we won't mature, we won't grow up, we keep repenting for the same thing. The, the word repent means to turn away. Period. Don't get me wrong, guys. I've had struggles that was hard to get off my back. When you need deliverance, the bottom line is you're going to be struggling. Well. But the reality is there are some things that we don't, we shouldn't have to repent because we slipped and cursed somebody out. That's right. right. No, we should be past. Right. We shouldn't have to keep repenting for things. Oh, I had an attitude. I was ugly as I don't know what in that restaurant. I was ugly as I don't know what in that cash register. Why? Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> the Bible says, see, we can't look at saying, oh, the homosexual, oh, all them tattoos, he's going and getting all messing up. Don't you know what the body say about your body? What do the Bible say about your nasty gossiping mouth? Come on, say it's that. still a sin. That's right. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. In their mind. And write them on their heart. The heart. You see that? He was trying to get them to get to the heart of the matter. He was observing the feast of the Passover. Not the fact that this is the time that we do this on the calendar. No, I want to get in your heart. Yes. Because you can do all of that. And yes, it had meaning. But he was trying to say, now. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. See, because how, how would they know him? They will know him because he's in them. I don't have to say, Elos, come here, let me take you by the hand. This is the month that we do this. This is what we do over here. And if you do all of this, then you can, you know, give your thanks to God, burn your sacrifice, and you're a well. No, everybody who says, I want to be a child of God and calls on the name of the Lord, you will receive the spirit of God. Adoption, where you can cry now, Abba, Father. In other words, yeah, that was the way being, but you've been engrafted into this thing now. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Keisha. For all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. What did I say last night? I said the law separates. The law calls competitiveness. Right. The law causes pride. But he said because of the spirit, the least and the greatest is equal. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Say that again. They got free. Yes. Some of y'all stand and wait for the pastor. I know, can I be personal? Because I've been to the birthday place. I'm not picking on y'all. But I've watched. And, and not just at the birthday place, at other churches. You stand and you're waiting, 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 and wanting from the pastor. Get what you need. Jesus. Goodness gracious. Go ahead. Why is God saying this birth in place? Because he loves you. There is a work for this church to do. I don't know how many prophets have stood behind you and said it. This is the second year. This, you're, you're beginning the third year. And this ministry has already experienced things that some ministries haven't been experienced in 15 years. Look at this building. And we hate to keep referencing to the building, but I love it because he said it was a pattern that was set. Come on. He, he let y'all know this, this was not because the Duns went and wrote checks everywhere and ran their credit cards. So this was because people gave, because they saw something, because the Lord touched them, because the Lord showed them something. So because of that, you need to grow up. This is the foundation of this ministry. How much more can I say this? Don't look at ministry as just a place where you get what you need. Look at it as something that's established to the return of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because any real ministry ain't going nowhere. It has no intentions of shutting down. Come on. So that means if you're in here and you're a part of this work, my God. I don't I think we're so I think we don't we take for granted being the the founding part of a work. Come on. They are the founders, but y'all are the co-founders. 
proud of you. This is year two. I said it last night, some of y'all don't get it, but tomorrow, mm, mm, mm. we're going to birth this thing. Because the reality is some of your children are going to be standing up here if you believe it. Do y'all see that in the spirit? Jesus, some of your grandchildren. See, we're so short-minded. Just like in marriage. People get married now in the body of Christ and they got the intention of getting a divorce. Goodness when you join a ministry and you, I'm not saying everywhere that you go, you got to be stuck up in there for the rest of your life. Because some people need to be set free from that. But I am saying that when you join a ministry and God makes you a pillar in that ministry, you better not be planning on getting a divorce. See, that's the problem with some marriages. People are already go to get, well, I'm going to go ahead and, what do you think? Um, um, Minister Hope, what do you think? Because I think I need to keep this bank account on the side. We better be careful. Be, mm. I hear you preacher. Jesus. I'm going to move to the next point. <laughs> so we have to leave the weak and beggarly elements. We're going to move on because I, I know it's a weak night. And then we have to embrace the grace. <laughs> aren't y'all glad that after hearing all that, aren't you glad it's some grace? <laughs> Divine and mercy. Jesus. The Bible says his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures to all generations. That His mercy endures forever to all generations. Nothing can separate us from his love. We can stay a baby. We can act a fool. We cannot grow up. But the reality is nothing can still separate us from his love. Because Paul turned around and said, yeah, y'all stole me. Left me in the city for dead. I'm bloody. I'm messed up. I done stayed out here preaching and teaching y'all. But I'm still coming back. Because of his mercy. Because he saw me on the road to Damascus. Because he decided that even though I had pissed. to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth. Lord, you mean to tell me that Jesus' life right now is about praying for me? Because Paul ain't the only one travailing. Paul is not the only one trying to birth them. Jesus is still sitting on the right hand of the Father in the city so that you can be birthed again. My God. Why? Because I messed up the first time. Because I didn't get it. Because I wasn't willing to let go of the weak and beggarly elements. But Jesus is sitting there in the city because he knows whole black will got to be birthed again. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Till Christ is formed in her. And you know you don't get the fullness of Christ formed in you until you out of here, out of this body. That's right. Jesus. Embrace the grace. Embrace. My God. When you embrace the grace, you soar. Because the Bible says there is therefore no more condemnation to them who won't walk no more after the flesh, but now after the spirit. So I've embraced the grace, so now I don't care what they say about me. They can say that baby, Ray Ray, and Chay Chay had me back in the day. But the reality is they might did. But the reality is that I embrace the grace. The reality is that he said for his name's sake, he will not remember my sins. So when fear and intimidation come upon you, see some of y'all
where an individual and a group, an individual or a group, is gripped by something that grips the heart of God. And if ministry don't grip the heart of God, what does? So we have a group here. We have individuals here. Mm, mm, that's why I said tomorrow night you better you better not here. It's coming as a spectator that don't know because I'm trying to tell you and I and I don't like to say things like that, but I'm serious about it this time. Because sometimes there are certain things that take place that, that can run a person away if they don't understand. See, this is a revival. We need to be strategic. Because sometimes when people come in and they don't have understanding, it's the confusion and people are not explaining right, what's right, occurring. Right. So it's confusion and we don't want that. And if they come up, we're gonna explain it. So they won't be confused. That's right. That's right. Jesus. Say it again. Yeah. But but what happens is the individual or group of laborers they labor in prayer so that an opening is created in the spirit. Wow. See, in the natural travailing, an opening is being created in the natural. Because through that period of tra travail, which means intense pain, which means labor, which means crying out, there's an opening that's being, uh, 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 you're going from one centimeter to two centimeters, they come back and take you three centimeters. For some people it takes 24 hours, for some people it's three days, for some people you have to go back home and you know, they take you back to the hospital, they say you ain't ready. For some people you go in there and it's 15 minutes and they ain't even ready because they didn't even know what was going to happen. Jesus. But it's an opening being created. And when the Bible speaks about travailing, and God travailing, and Paul travailing, and others that travail, there was an opening being created. Hello, Eloah. And the opening was created so that something can come forth. See, the reason why some of us haven't ever been revived, and we've been about 340 revivals, is because we never travailed. Any revival that took place from the 1800s, from the 1400s to this day, it began with prayer. Yeah. At the end of that revival, yeah. it was prayer that birthed the movement. Mm, mm. It's not a coincidence that this is that this is not a coincidence that this is the ninth month of the year. Yes. Say and God got a word about travailing and birth. Say that. Say that. That is not even a coincidence, and that ain't no well planned word either. No. That was the spirit of God. Amen. Jesus. So y'all got the definition. Mm -mm. What is travail? If somebody asked you, what would you say? You would say, it's to toil. It's intense agony over something. Yes. Yes. It's suffering the pains of birth. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Travailing takes place after you have carried something in your heart for a period of time. Uh -huh. yeah. Come on. See, see, everybody can't travail. No. Because you don't start travailing after the, it, it, after the seed is planted. Because it's not time. Right. Right. So some of y'all will be here learning. So that when it's, it's your time. But see, some of y'all have had something in your heart. And I believe it's about almost all of you. For a very long time. Yeah. But the, yeah. But the travailing comes on you suddenly. Yeah. Oh. Jesus, it comes on you suddenly, Pastor Dunn. Come on. You know that this thing been, this ag it's just been agonizing for a long time, Eloy. It's just been like, oh my God, Jesus. Oh God, oh God, Jesus. But then all of a sudden that travail hits you. And you know that it's time. You know that something is coming for You can feel it. And you know it in the spirit. Jesus. Jesus. So what happens is mm -hmm. there, there's something carried in the heart for a period of time. Mm -hmm. The travail hits you suddenly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at a strategic time, wow. you have to push. <laughs> See, that's the part that can't nobody help you with, really. Ooh. People can say, breathe, breathe, breathe. Y'all know, because that's why women be slapping their husbands all in the face. Because whether they talking to you, but they ain't helping you. <laughs> they're not helping you for real. They're there as moral support. <laughs> <laughs> so the reality is you squeeze their hands and slapping people and everything because you know that at the end of the day you're the one that has to push. push. Yes. Wow. Jesus. Seeing many things but you did not observe. Opening the ears but he does not hear. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will exalt the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and plundered, 
all of them are snared in holes, and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey, and no one delivers. For plunder, and no one says, restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel for the robbers? Was it not the Lord? He against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, nor were they obedient to his law. Therefore he has poured on him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. It has set him on fire all around, yet he did not know, and it burned him, yet he did not take it to heart. There's some things that we're experiencing because it's just life. There's some things that we're experiencing because it's consequences of our actions. Let's keep it real. Sometimes we ask God to fix things that are consequences of our actions. And if we go through some of those consequences, God will use those things as a testimony. But then there's some things that we are going through. Because God had to step back for a minute and just let it have its way. It might have been furious. It might have been painful. It might have robbed you. But the Bible says that all of them are snared in holes, hidden in prison houses, don't even know that they're bound. They are sitting there as prey and nobody is crying out, deliver us. Why? Because they don't think they need to be delivered. My God. Snared in holes. Taken for plunder and nobody is saying, restore us, God. Why? Because we don't think we need restoration. Jesus. Keisha, read verse 14. Because this is what I love about travail and this is what I love about God and his nature. I have held my peace a long time. I have been still and restrained myself. Now, I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. You can keep reading. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will make the rivers coastlands and I will dry up the pools. Mm. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. Jesus. We gonna close right there. Because he said, I have sat back and watched you sisters and brothers. (laughs) I I, I was still for a while. I I just let some stuff go ahead and happen that needed to happen. And I restrained myself, but now, not Paul, God himself. He told Israel, he said, but now, I got to cry out in travail. As a woman in labor, I will pant and gasp. He said he's going he's gonna to dry up some stuff. So it might look a little worse before it looks better. But if you really do what this scripture meant, you'd be smiling. You'd be celebrating. You would be shouting. Because he said,
rejoice in him. Because even though he was stoned, he said, I'm going to go back and look at these same people in the face. He said, I'm going to go back and tell them to be encouraged. I'm going to go back and tell them about the true and living God. Mm. See, y'all should be celebrating. Stand